everybody. Welcome to Get Wealth Podcast. I'm your host, Brennan Wiersma. Please be sure to like and subscribe and all that stuff. Uh, today, I'm here with Nick Perry, real estate investor pro. Uh, I'm not going to lie, I'm real excited to ask you some questions. I got home from work just five minutes ago and I was, um, you know, I was looking forward to this. So thanks for coming on the show today, man. Yeah, man. I'm blessed to be here. I'm excited to uh, chop it up with you and you know, see if we can provide as much value as we can. We can drop some bombs and and make it a good time. Sounds good, dude. I, I see your back, your, your background over there. Looks like you're in um, a tropical area. Where is that? Is that East coast? Uh, yeah, no, I'm in, uh, I live in Miami. So I'm just standing outside side of my house right now. It's a little noisy inside of my house. So I wanted to just step outside. It's a beautiful day right now. Um, so I'm just taking it on my phone. I'm just, just chilling right now. Yeah, man, that, that's the place to be right now. I've, I'm in Arizona, so it's uh, it's it's, I'm, it's actually kind of cold here. Well, I'm in uh, northern Arizona, so it's like an hour north of Phoenix, and we actually get snow in this area. So um, it's about 60s, but I'd, I'd rather have the palm trees in the background like you. <laughs> yeah, there's nothing wrong with that. Arizona is one of my favorite states. Though. Arizona, Texas, Florida, all strong economies, all good states. So I love oh, yeah. uh, I love visiting there as well. I'll be there in a couple of weeks, like I was telling you before we started. Cool, man. Hey, yeah. So let's just kind of jump right into um, your your story. Like, how, how did you get going in real estate? Did you always want to do that? I think it froze. Yeah. So, um, yeah, it was it, it started, you know, very humble beginnings, man. I um, you grew up, you know, middle class, uh, moved with my dad when I was 14. My dad didn't have a lot of money. So I got to really experience like poverty firsthand, living in a one bedroom apartment uh, on his couch. You know, you could barely make rent. I had to basically start working when I was 14, you know, to just provide for myself to get, you know, lunch money, basically like, you know, money to go to Taco Bell or whatever I needed to do. I had to you know, start working at an early age. So, you know, that I've been working basically every single day since I was 14. And uh, my first real career outside of like high school was I was a personal trainer. And I train all these wealthy clients all the time. And I noticed there was a reoccurring trend that they all owned businesses. They were all some sort of entrepreneur. And I was like, I, I got the wrong operating system. I need to figure out how I can go own a company. And so that really put like the entrepreneurial bug in me. And one of my clients actually hired me to uh, do outside sales for his company. He owned like the frozen yogurt shops where you go and make your own cup of yogurt, put it on the scale. So he was like my first sales mentor. He used to be the CEO of Quiznos Subs back in its heyday. Whoa. And he retired, got bored, you know, and decided to start a yogurt franchise. So um, I worked very closely with him. He took me under his wing. I got to learn a lot of great, you know, just entrepreneurial skills, sales skills in that position. And I also got to travel the entire country. So at the time I was living in Northern Virginia, um, you know, there wasn't a lot there for me. You know, it's all federal government jobs. Yeah, if, unless you want to get like a top secret clearance, you just, you know, there's not really a lot of industry there. So after my tenure uh, working with the, the frozen yogurt company, that company kind of died out in like 2014. Um, that whole frozen yogurt trend died out. And so I moved to Austin, Texas, just on a whim. I didn't know anybody. I didn't have any connections, didn't have any jobs lined up. I just put everything in the back of my car and drove down there. And then um, I really need to start figuring out what I was going to do with my life. Cause I only had five grand in my name moving down there. Uh, and so money was going quick and I was searching for jobs and I was also searching like, well, what kind of business could I create for myself? And uh, it, you know, real estate wholesaling made sense. I looked at, you know, the Forex, you know, crypto, multi-level marketing, all of it. And real estate wholesaling was made the most sense. You buy up, you get a property under contract for this and you sell it for that. So I'm a pretty simple guy. I barely made it through high school. Uh, so the simplicity and the um, amount of money you can make was what really drew me in. And that's when I just like went super deep on educating myself. I put myself through like YouTube university started taking action. Um, and, uh, it took me a long time. I think it took me 11 months and 104 face to face appointments before I got my first deal. So it wasn't an easy, easy grind. And I've been doing it for seven years. That was back in 2014. 
when I got my start. So we're here seven years later now. Wow, man. Dude, that's inspiring. Yeah, I always like hearing that origination of, you know, where, where something started that's turned into, you know, a, a really successful operation because there's so many similarities. Like the the whole idea of being around people that are wildly successful. That, that's really the reason I started this podcast is I figured that I actually got the idea from the book um, Think and Grow Rich by Napoleon Hill. And it's just the combination of all these wildly successful entrepreneurs and capitalists. And then the that kind of just you absorb the information and it has turns into, you know, like a, an airline or it turns into you know, an oil company or someone who's like a owns a bank or something like that. It all starts just from like being surrounded by that type of people. And that kind of sounds like it was with you. Like you were training people that are really successful and that kind of like one thing led to another. Do, do you still yeah, try to exactly. do that? No, absolutely. I'm always trying to get that exposure. Like the, that's the, a huge cheat code. If you're trying to level up in life, it's just exposure, right? You, you're a com combination of the five people you surround yourself with, right? So if you get around five billionaires, you're probably going to end up being the sixth. Uh, and it's the contrary too. If you're around five, five crackheads, you're probably going to be the sixth, right? So, you know, environmental exposure, like putting yourself in like, you know, nice neighborhoods around, you know, wealthy people, putting yourself in um, situations that you wouldn't, nor circles that you wouldn't normally be in is going to be an easy way without you having to go study a bunch of books and do a bunch of things just subconsciously, you're going to start adapting those um, behaviors and that psychology and you'll end up leveling up just naturally. That's so cool, man. Yeah. For, and for me, what I've, um, after doing all these podcasts and talking to all these people that are, you know, have this mindset of creating money and wealth, um, real estate has caught my attention the most. It just seems the most appealing. It seems like, um, I mean, you don't have to have some PhD. It just, it, to me, it just seems like if you're willing to put in the work and hustle, yeah, I mean, you really don't got to know any crazy math. You got to be able to do like, you know, probably middle school level math, but even then you can just Google or have someone else do it for you. Um, so real estate for you, you started out wholesaling. Do you do anything else? Yeah. I mean, we do a bunch of stuff now, but you know, back to your point, like when they started introducing uh, letters into math, that's when I said, I'm done. <laughs> yeah. they, after algebra, I was like, that's it for me. I'm out. I know how to add, subtract, multiply, divide. That's it. So yeah. yeah and, and look and, at you now. <laughs> right. And we have a very, you know, very nice operation. And, and so you don't need uh, a lot of technical skills um, to get started. Um, you don't have to be a brain surgeon, but it does take, uh, you know, tenacity really, because it's, it's very simple, but it's very hard. So yeah. you have to be mentally prepared for that. Yeah. There's a quote from, uh, actually this was my basketball coach, also English teacher, but he would always say, um, simple is not easy. Like something could be simple, like, oh yeah, buy the house or get it under contract. But that doesn't, simple doesn't mean easy, you know, to do that, my light just went out, but to, to do that, you're going to have to, you know, maybe knock on a thousand doors or call however many people, like it's not necessarily, simple is not necessarily easy, which I think applies to a lot of things. Um, so for, for you, how, how did you start? Like with all that work you had cut out for you, was it phone calling or wholesale? You said wholesaling, right? So what, what was your, your first deal? Dude, back then, they, I mean, they told you if you didn't have any money, then you need to start handwriting letters. And so that's what I would do. I'd go to Dollar General and I'd get a bunch of legal pads and envelopes and I'd save up, I'd save up all my money for stamps and postage. And I'd sit there until two o'clock in the morning every single night handwriting so letters. Goodness. Yeah. And I mean, dude, that was a brutal road to go down. I mean, I wouldn't advise that to anybody. That's how I got my first deal, but it was an uphill battle. My hand, like, still hurts from seven years ago writing all those letters so how many do you think you wrote yeah i would sit there i'll go through like you know at least 200 a night so whoa yeah do you write yeah. long letters or how, how do you how do you write those no it was just very simple like hey it's um nick i'm looking to uh buy a house in in your neighborhood give me a call when you get this something very short and sweet 
hey, I'm interested in buying your house. Give me a call when you get this. Like, and I would just sit there and crank those out wide, listen to like motivational podcasts going on in the background. Like, I got to do this. I got to be successful. You know? Yeah. Yeah. So it was, uh, it was, it, it was a tough, tough uh, beginning because, you know, when you only have five grand and you got to pay rent, you know how fast five grand goes in the real world. Right. And you have yeah. to make shit happen. It was brutal. So I ended up, I did get another job um, in between the time that I started wholesaling to the time that I actually became a full-time entrepreneur. I was working uh, as an enterprise sales rep for indeed.com. And so I went from like, you know, basically almost getting evicted from my one bedroom apartment in the hood to making a quarter million dollars a year at Indeed. So that really, really helped. I went in there with just like this aggressive mindset. Like I want to be successful in wholesaling and I'll do whatever it takes to get there. So I got this sales job. And as soon as I got it, I became like president's club, top gun, like rookie of the year. Um, Hey, sorry, I cut out on me. I had a phone call coming. It was like president's club rookie of the year right out of the gate. So I saved myself by getting that job. But what I did was I took all the money from my commissions at my sales job and then just kept funneling it into my real estate business. So getting coaching and one-on-one -on -one mentorship, investing into better marketing systems and tools. Um, and then consequently, any additional time that I had outside of my nine to five was dedicated to real estate. So, you know, I'd have my nine to five, I'd go home, I'd kiss the dog, and then it was right on to making seller calls. And then of course, every weekend, Saturday and Sunday, yeah, that's what it was all about for the first two or three years, driving to appointments, you know, put a lot of miles on my car, um, ran up a lot of minutes on my phone. That's awesome, man. Yeah, that just it seems like the only uh, tried and true way is just to put in that amount of work, just to become obsessed almost. Yeah, the, the obsession is what will carry you through, you know, those hard times. You know, and it's uh it's just one of those things you have to have that obsession and just tenacity to, you know, go that extra mile because I think it's like 99% of people will end up quitting before they're successful in any business venture. So you have to have almost that like neurotic um mindset. You know, some people get lucky right out of the gate and they do great, but yeah, I, it wasn't from, that wasn't me. I, I didn't, I never had anything handed to me. It was all, uh, you know, just had to put in the, the grind man for, and you know, now everybody is like, Oh, Nick, you're, you're crushing it, but they don't understand that I've been doing this for seven years. And yeah, now I got it figured out because when you go to work for 80 hours a freaking week, every single week, after seven years, you start to get shit figured out. <laughs> yeah. That's so cool. So are you at the point now where it's just, clockwork you just know what to do yeah dude my team's all in austin texas you see i'm here in miami florida um you know i go to my office in austin once every couple of weeks just to basically show face and you know help out where i can but um you know my team runs everything to where i don't have to have much involvement in my my wholesaling company for my day-to-day -day. i really just need to go check in be the face of the company figure out where i can lead block to them and that's that's the extent of my involvement in my real estate company. Man, that's so cool. What do you spend most of your time doing now? Sitting on the beach drinking Mai Tais or? No, not at <laughs> all. No, I mean, yeah, I still have that. I feel like I'm just getting started. I'm only 32 years old. So, yeah, you know, I have much bigger dreams and aspirations for what I want to do with my life and where I'm trying to go. You know, my uh, biggest thing now is to, you know, help um, other entrepreneurs that are coming up to get them to where I am faster because it took me, like I said, seven years, a long time to just, you know, devote to, to any business. And if I had the right operating system, I think I could, could have probably done it in like a year and a half, to be honest with you. But wow. I didn't. I was spending my money on the wrong stuff, doing the wrong kind of marketing. Didn't know what the hell I was doing in acquisitions or dispositions. And so, you know, I was like, look, I could cheat code this entire system. Um, and so I, I developed, um, a mastermind called the seven figure cartel. It's for already existing real estate entrepreneurs that are already doing deals that are looking to basically just get, get the fast pass to get to where they're trying to go. Uh, because I respect the hustle and the pain that, you know, a lot of people are going through with inconsistencies, ups and downs in their businesses. 
been there, done that, got the t-shirt. So I'm really passionate about helping uh, other entrepreneurs, but then my next uh, major uh, focus and passion is in commercial real estate. So, you know, being uh, great at, you know, wholesaling is a huge accomplishment in my life, but that's just a stepping stone for, you know, where I'm trying to go, which is larger asset classes and, you know, create generational wealth for my, you know, myself and my family and future generations long-term. Yeah. That's so cool, man. Yeah. It's, it's, it's almost like you're, you graduate to the next level. Like wholesaling is, I, I've, it seems like most people start at wholesaling. Do you think that's true? Yeah, because it's the only thing you can really do if you're like sitting there with not a lot of money to your name. You know, if you're if you're broke in your mom's basement right now, you could wholesale a deal. Yeah. You know, but there's not a lot of businesses like that. You're not jumping into commercial real estate, you know, unless you've got some liquidity and some connections and you know what you're doing. Yeah. So for the people watching this that have no idea what wholesaling is, I've talked it about I've talked about it on this podcast before, but can you just give a quick rundown? You mentioned you signed the contract, kind of how that works. Yeah. So basically all wholesaling is, is say you've got a house that's worth a hundred thousand dollars, right? Dan, you know, um, you know, he's got to say, you got a house that's worth a hundred grand. I call you and say, Hey man, would you be interested in you know, selling your house? You say, yeah, man, what do you give me for it? And you, you'll, you'll say like, uh, I want a hundred grand for it, but I'll negotiate you down to like 65, 65,000, right? You, for whatever reason you say, okay, I'm going to set you, sell you my house for 65,000. And you ask, why would people sell you their house for 65 cents on the dollar? Well, because life happens, right? You have all kinds of circumstantial and financial issues, why people can't get their house sold on the traditional market. Like say, if you got, you know, um, yeah, the house is getting, you're, you're behind on your payments or, you know, you got some serious bills due, or you're getting relocated across country and you can't afford multiple mortgage payments. Like there's reasons why people do that. So we target um, homeowners that are in you know, some sort of distress. And then we negotiate a fair price for their property that not only you know, solves their problem, but that we can make money on too. So if you agree and you say, all right, Nick, 65,000, um, we'll close here in two weeks. I'll say, okay, I'll get that contract from you for 65,000. And then I'll find a fix and flipper kind of like some of you see on HGTV or a, you know, somebody that wants another rental for their portfolio and I'll sell it to them for 75 or 80,000. So I'll sign a contract with them for 75 or 80,000. Now I got two contracts, one between me and you and one between that investor. Now I just take those two, two, uh, two pieces of paper and to the title company and say, if we did it for 80,000, uh, you know, the buyer is buying it for, me for 80,000 and I got it from you for 65, then the uh, title company is going to cut me a check for 15,000. And all I did was negotiate with you and negotiate with another person. Yeah. You're just the middle man and you take the difference, right? Man, that's, that's Correct. so cool. Um, yeah, that, that, when I found out about wholesaling, I was like, is this real? And then I learned more. It's like, okay, yeah, this is, this is a cool, um, tool to have in your belt and in, in real estate and a good way to get started as well. Um, so for you, when you got that first deal, you you mentioned you were doing direct mail, you, you brought up a couple other things like, uh, cold calling. And I know there's things like driving for dollars. If you could go back, uh, in time, but apply it to today's market, how would you start finding leads or finding motivated sellers? Yeah, if you drop me off in like a random city, you know, I didn't have any connections. I couldn't use any of my own money. Um, what I would do is I would start driving for dollars and find the distressed properties, you know, the ones that are boarded up or they have deferred maintenance, tall grass in the yards, things like that. And I'd write down all those addresses and I'd drive, you know, to at least get a list of like a few hundred of them, right? So it might take you, you know, a day or two. And then once you've got that list, you can go skip trace all of those phone numbers. So there's multiple providers that allow you to skip trace those phone numbers for those property owners. So I get all those property owners um, phone numbers and I would legitimately just call every single one of them one by one. If you dropped me off and I had nothing and I was like in the mud right now, that's what I would do. And then, you know, what else I do, I text every single one of them and that would stir up enough conversation to where I get the ball rolling to start creating some interest in being able to purchase these folks property. And now I got a, a dialogue going 
to start a negotiation. Yeah, that's so cool. Yeah, it's because I mean, really, if some if that if you were to be in that situation, like God forbid, whatever reason, but you're in, you're somewhere and you got dropped off in any city, like you could make a you you could be okay. You could you could hustle. You could use your sales negotiating and start start making some money, um, which is another reason why I think real estate's so uh, appealing. Um, do you think that your ability to negotiate um, affects in a large way how many deals you close or is it just a numbers game purely if you talk to this many people you'll probably get around this many motivated sellers no i mean your uh ability to communicate with other people i don't care what industry you're in if you're in sales which that's what this is it's a, it's a sales job it's a marketing and sales job so obviously if you suck at sales you're going to have a hard time. And at the beginning, I sucked at sales. It took me 104 appointments before I even got my first deal. Now, you know, we get like one in every 15. So, you know, I've refined and got much better at my craft. But yeah, if you, you know, if you've done sales before in the past or, you know, that sales is something that's you, you want to get into, then this is a wonderful um, avenue for you to go create a lot of cash for yourself. Yeah, that's awesome. So from your time wholesaling, uh, what does your business look like now? How do you operate your system? So I have um, five full-time acquisition managers. So there's the guys that are talking to the homeowners on the phone and negotiating those contracts. Then I have three full-time disposition managers. And so those guys are selling the deals to the investors. And then I have a um, CEO who runs the entire company. So oh, basically wow. two, two inside sales, um, you know, departments with a, a CEO on top. Okay. And, and you're just the, um, the owner of, the, of it all. So you're kind of doing more big picture stuff and CEO is probably That's handling it. more direct stuff. Yeah. So if you got like a sports analogy, like I'm, I'm the, you know, I'm Bob Kraft you know, and then my CEO, he's uh, Bill Belichick, right? Got it. Yeah. yeah. So that's how it works. And then, you know, the rest of the guys that I got my Tom Brady, my Edelman, you know, I got <laughs> my whole squad. I like so, it. That's a good analogy. Yeah. Um, what do you think of today's market? It just seems like everybody's buying everything way over asking price that every market, I mean, especially Phoenix, like you can't have, something on the MLS without getting something over asking. Um, do you think that's going to change soon? Do you think it's normal? What do you think about the market right now? I think as long as the Fed keeps the, as long as the interest rates stay low um, and, you know, the Fed's continuing to print more money and then we have a huge housing shortage in America. So obviously when you have, you know, high demand, low inventory that's going to drive prices up and right now for the foreseeable future there's nothing as of you know april 2021 that's showing that that's going to change right so for the short term you know i see that trend continuing to rise where prices continue to rise obviously you know it's a it's a market cycle so it's going to crash back down eventually and, and how that happens, it's anybody's guess, right? Mm -hmm. So, you know, if the feds raise interest rates, we're still going to have a housing shortage. You know, even if the foreclosures hit all the market, we still have a huge housing shortage. And, uh, you know, all this demand, you know, they just passed a law where first-time home buyers will get $25,000 credit. So it's, uh, it's really insane right now. So to, if you had to ask me, uh, until something major happens, we're not going to see any um, any changes to the way things are going. Got it. So uh, has that affected <laughs> how you do the business at all? Are you more cash heavy right now to buy a deal or has that changed any way you run your business? No, I mean, you know, when I'm evaluating properties, we're taking into consideration not just the sold comps, but we're looking about at what's on the market and how, how the uh, for sale properties are doing because even a house 
three months ago that sold. That's not an accurate comp to today because the market's moving so fast. So you have to be very, um, you have to be very discerning on what you're using for your comparables. So we look at for sales and we look at solds, uh, but that's really the only thing that's changed. I mean, it's easier to sell deals now. It's harder to get deals. So, you know, we're, uh, you know, investing more into marketing. We're doing uh, more sales trainings with our acquisitions. And that's, you know, basically the only thing that's really changed. Got it. Yeah, <laughs> that, that makes sense. Is there certain criteria that you have when you're buying a deal that it just, if it's a certain year it's built or just certain things that will cause you to not buy it? Uh, we don't, we don't mess with, it's like under 50,000 because those houses it's just hard to make a, a big spread on them so especially if it needs a lot of work if it's under fifty thousand, we we really won't touch it it's just not worth the time and energy um that goes into it so we tend to focus on higher arv properties properties that are worth more than fifty thousand. got it that makes sense um you mentioned mastermind groups and it looks like you have one your shirt the seven figure wholesaling cartel how important is that to your uh, development? And do you think it's something everybody should do? That's the cheat code right there because what, you know, I don't know how many you know, of you guys out there listening like own businesses, but where you get stuck is just not having the right information sometimes. Hey, my, oh, well, yeah, it's because you, the, uh, your campaign's not set up the right way or, you know, say if you're like, hey, man, I'm uh, really having trouble selling my deals right now. Well, what if somebody could uh, just tell you, like, here's your buyer? So it's literally the cheat code to get into where you're trying to go. Yeah, it, it definitely seems like it because, I mean, you can always ask people questions. But if you have someone who's invested in seeing you do better, I just imagine that you're going to get that much quicker. Yeah, pretty much every resource that I've got in this business has come from a mastermind. Right. I, it's almost like uh, having a, um, a, a genie when you go to him, right? You're like, man, if I just had this one thing and then you go to, you get around the right people and you say, man, if I just had this one wish and usually it'll get granted when you, you know, get around the right people. So yeah, it's uh, so highly, I'm, I'm a huge proponent of plugging in with the right groups and the right people. Um, Cause if not, you're just going to, stay frustrated longer than you have to. You're going to spend money on things that you probably shouldn't have spent money on. Uh, you're just going to end up doing things way, way harder than it really needs to be. Yeah. And even something specifically to real estate that I've noticed talking to people like you, I've talked to like Tim Brods, Joshua Steinberg, a lot of the guys that I've had on the podcast are so willing to help out. It's not like another job where when someone else does well, it's like taken from you in any sort of way. You know, it's a, it really seems like an uplifting industry. Yeah, no, everybody is very uh, open, especially, you know, once you've uh, created some success in your life, uh, you want to help others. Like, I think that's just natural human nature. And in our industry in particular, uh, everybody, you know, almost works together in a way. There's not, like in a lot of under, other industries, there's trade secrets and stuff like that. It's not so much that way in uh, real estate. Yeah. If you, if you want to help yourself, there's going to be people that are willing to help you. Um, what, what's, what's one of the setbacks you've had in real estate? It seems like everyone's got a deal that just went south or uh, something you had to learn from the hard way. Well, dude, where do you want to start? We could write a whole book on that. <laughs> really? um, okay. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I've lost countless big deals that were my own fault. You know, I wasted millions of dollars on stupid you know, shit. Uh, yeah, I've, I could go on and on, but like to be specific, I mean, if you want like a real horror story, um, you know, I lost basically all my money in 2016 um, to common law. So I moved to Texas in 2014. I started dating this girl. Uh, yeah, 12 months into it, we're do I'm doing good. I'm living a high rise downtown. She just moved in a few weeks ago or whatever. And then I decided like it wasn't working out. So I wanted to go break up with her. Well, I went to go break up with her. And uh, a couple of days later, I'm walking down the street and a court processor hits me on the chest and says, hey, you've been served. And uh, basically she was connected. Her uncle was an attorney. They figured out how to 
like hem me up on a uh, common law, even though I'd only been dating this girl. And because her uncle was an attorney, there was no way I could like outspend her or defend myself properly in court. And so uh, the judge awarded basically all my assets and pretty much the majority of my money over to her. And so I had to basically, I was went from like living in this high rise to where I had to go to Walmart and get like clothes and like cell phone charger and, you know, build my life from that point. But I just kept putting one foot in front of the other and, uh, you know, just got my ass to work every single day. Didn't really skip a beat. And then within a few months, I was, you know, rocking and rolling again. Wow. That is scary. Wait, how, how long were you dating that girl? Like 12 or 13 months. No way. And they can do yeah. that? Yeah, in Texas, it doesn't matter. You can have, uh, if they get one piece of mail there, if they, um, where I really got messed up was where I put her on the bank account because she was doing some acquisitions for me and that's where it got dicey and she got mail there and so that and if they find you like in any infraction like that they make you go through like a real divorce so i've been divorced but i've never been married that sucks man but i mean it just shows yeah, that so, it's, but that's the thing i mean yeah no, here's ahead. the deal man is like, life's an unfair bitch sometimes so it's like what are you going to do about it you sit there and yeah, was I going to just sit there and pity myself or whatever? Like, I knew, like, self-pity wasn't the route to go down. So I just kept getting up 6 a.m. in the morning, take my ass to work. Like, you know, it sucked going through it. But, like, emotionally, it wasn't as traumatic as it really – you would think it would be because I just kept hard charging forward every single day. Like, I had a new, like, you know, tenacity to, to get out and get after it. So I think it's, it's about your mindset when you have those – you know, unfair challenges, you know, life setbacks. It's what are you going to do? You go to, do you go to self doubt and pity and blame, or do you just go into, um, you know, actually take an action, take an accountability. Okay. This is what it is. And this is what I'm going to do from here. Yeah. You know, that's, two yeah, different that's so good. It, yeah. I mean, it just shows, man, like it's, it's no mistake that you've done well in your business because, you know, it's, it's all about, just bad hustle, you know, doing the right things, making good decisions. I mean, you literally built it up from the ground um, twice. So that's, that's really cool. Um, yeah. it, so as, as far as some like tactical information, maybe you can arm somebody that might be listening right now. It, you, you're saying that it's mostly a sales and marketing business. Um, and, and, and the, um, the topic of sales, what are some things that you see people commonly screwing up on and how can they be better yeah i mean this is 1980 anymore you can't pretend like you're like some used car salesman and be like hey mr jones i was wondering if you'd like a cash offer on your house today like get that shit out of there you know you want to say you want to be more like the doctor right so don't try to be the sales guy you want to be the doctor that's giving a prescription so you know a little bit better approach would be, yeah, John, I saw you got this house, you know, on one, two, three main street. Uh, I just bought another property, two streets over. I'm buying one right now. I'm looking at yours and your neighbor's house. If I were to give you um, cash for your property, would you be interested in selling? Right. So you're just being direct and upfront and honest. People can smell bullshit from a mile away. So you you can't bullshit people. You got to be upfront, open, um, direct with people, or they're they're just going to tune you out. Especially nowadays, there's too much going on. So, got it. Yeah, got that it. makes a lot of sense. Do you think, as far as um, determining if someone's a motivated seller, is is there a aspect of it that's just kind of like don't take no for an answer, or is there just a, a few things you would notice and say, okay, move on, get to the next thing? Yeah, I mean, you're not body slam somebody into selling their house. Obviously, <laughs> you know, you you can use tactical objection handling and make sure that you're, um, you know, addressing the seller's needs in the right way and come up with, you know, solution. You want to be solutions oriented and obviously steer the conversation in the direction you want to go. But um, you're not going to body slam somebody into selling their house. So, you know, a lot of times it's going to be a multi 
part of the call. Like, you know, sometimes we have to follow up with these people for months, sometimes even years. And eventually they end up coming around. But follow, you'll make more money in your follow-up than you will um, anything else. Okay, got it. Um, what do you think about door knocking? Because I've been doing a lot of that in my local neighborhood, and it just seems like everyone just says no, 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 over and over again. Yeah, you're killing yourself, man. I mean, <laughs> knocking on nobody wants anybody knocking on their door these days, straight up. Um, you know, much better approach would be to text them. It's much less, you know, it, you know, texting somebody, cold texting people is pretty invasive. Knocking on their door is even more invasive, right? So, you know, my suggestion would be, you know, telecommunications, so cold calling, text messaging. You could even, even send ringless voicemail blasts where, you know, you're leaving voicemails for thousands of people and you'll get a, a much better, you know, you're still going to probably get the same response rate as you do door knocking. You know, a hundred people are going to say no, but then one person's going to say yes, but you're doing it from your freaking house or wherever <laughs> you're at. Uh, and you're not having to go bang a hundred doors and spend your whole afternoon doing it. So you just, you want to be very, um, you want to be very selective with your time, right? Cause it, there's no way you could um, knock that many doors to get that many deals. In my opinion, I mean, you get an army of door knockers, but uh, I think you, you're better off doing telecommunications. Our biggest avenue for finding deals is digital advertising, so pay per click advertising, Google AdWords. Okay. So, yeah, yeah, that's helpful. Yeah, I was door knocking yesterday, and a guy came out with his gun, and um, it was after I had knocked on his house, no answer. I went to the next one and then I see this guy in, a str in the street with his hand on his hip and he's staring at me. And I was like, Oh, I think I just knocked on your door. I just wanted to, you know, at, I'm buying houses. I wanted to see if you'd be interested in um, selling or if you know anybody I could help out. And he just goes, no, and turns around, but I feel like he was aggressive. Dude. Yeah, no, I respect the hustle, man. I respect the hustle. It's not, it takes a lot of courage to knock on doors first of all. And then it's a brutal job. So, I think you could, uh, with that tenacity, you get a lot of deals if you just uh, channel that energy into the right uh, marketing uh, channel. So yeah. I'd switch it up a little bit. I think you're going to have a lot of success. Yeah, door knocking is probably the hardest thing to do. Uh, okay. for, yeah. So well, that's good to know. Um, what do you think about virtual wholesaling? Have you had any experience with that? I do uh, deals all over the United States. So. I, my, none of my guys have ever seen the inside of a house. Wow. Okay. So do you I, look on the MLS then? No, we, we just generate motivated seller leads all from uh, digital advertising. So, it, okay. like advertising. so I market the entire United States. So I've got deals all over the country from California to Alaska, to Florida, to Maine, to Arizona. I'm doing a deal out by you right now. So. Nice. So man. we have yeah, now we we do everything over the phone. We do everything virtually. Basically, it, we're just the inside sales organization. Is all all we are. So it's like Wolf of Wall Street minus the cocaine. <laughs> That's awesome. Um, yeah. I was uh, I kind of did a deep dive on all of you know Jerry Norton. Have you heard of him on YouTube? Yeah. No, I was just hanging out with him uh, a couple weeks ago in Key West. Dude, he's he's so cool. I, I try to get him on the podcast, but I mean, my small podcast, most people don't want to come on. So I mean, I, I appreciate you at your level coming on here. Um, but he he does a lot of the um, he'll go on Zillow or Redfin and do the comps that way and get wholesale deals done that or done that way. Is that a strategy that you use or you think that's no. for beginners? Uh, no, I think that's a suicide mission, in my opinion. <laughs> uh, with Competitive nature of the MLS and Zillow right now, uh, you're just up against a lot of stiff competition. If you're gonna, you're not dealing with people that are coming to you. So my best advice for marketing is learn how to get good at digital advertising. Digital advertising is that like Facebook ads, things like that? Uh, that's with social media, Google, Bing. Learn how to do Google and Bing better than anybody in the in the industry. So that's a lot of what like my mastermind focuses on is teaching people digital advertising. So, you know, that would be my suggestion. You know, if you've got a little bit of budget, you got some money, 
is to go deep on learning how to do Google and Bing advertising. You'll make a fortune. I mean, that's how I make millions and millions of dollars every year. I don't do any cold calling. I don't do any texting, no door knocking. I don't do anything like that. I do everything online. Wow. I'll, I'll take your word for it. That sounds like um, a great tool. I mean, it makes sense. That's kind of where everything's going, right? Right. And you have people come to you rather than you going to people, right? So it, the whole uh, conversation dynamic changes when you have people that are asking to speak to you rather than the other way around. Yeah, that's cool. Um, okay, I'll, I won't take a note of it because it's already recorded and I can just listen to it, but um, I'm definitely going to start, start working on that. Um, another thing that I, that kind of I always want to talk about because it just seems kind of like the same way that wholesaling, you don't need a lot of uh, things to start doing is creative financing. You know, there's, if you were able to negotiate terms that are basically no money down and you can create a lot of situations that can help the seller. Have you done any deals like that? Like seller finance or subject to yeah, yeah. subject to deals all the time. Yeah. You know, my suggestion is, is like when you're just getting started, try not to inundate yourself with too much. You want to keep it as simple as possible. Um, I made that mistake at the beginning where I was like, all right, I'm going to learn how to do wholesaling. I'm going to learn how to do subject to creative financing, lease options, you know, wraps. I'm going to learn how to do all that. That way I have all these different uh, things in my tool belt. And what I did was I just confused the shit out of myself. Okay. Right. <laughs> so my, I, maybe you can master it all. I don't no, know. Like I, guess I barely made it through. I You're barely made it through high school. <laughs> I barely made it through high school, but uh, my, my suggestion is to, to just stay laser focused, you're going to go a lot further. You know, if you want to do creative financing, then don't do anything else. Don't even think about wholesaling deals for right now. If you want to do wholesale, then just keep the, keep the blinders on at least for the first like year or two. And then, you know, you start getting into different exit strategies. you wait till you get um, your feet underneath you uh, before you try to start adding uh, other confusion into the business. Okay. That's, that's, that's good advice. Cause right now I'm kind of all over the place. I mean, there's so much information, like there's so many things you can do in real estate. There's not just, I mean, I feel like most people will think of, Oh, you get a mortgage and you buy a house. It's like an unlimited amount of ways you could structure a deal. So yeah. Uh, so for newer sense. invest, yeah. Newer investors, man. <clears throat> biggest thing is like, you know, focus on one strategy because you can get like you could, you, you'll be watching one YouTube video, then you go to the next YouTube video and then next podcast. And like, now you're just hit with all this information and you, you, you end up either doing the wrong thing or you get analysis paralysis um, or you're confused. Yeah. You know, basically just keep it simple. Like just get the phone ringing or uh, get motivated solid leads to talk to and negotiate the right price. It's not, and then get them to sign a contract. It's not that hard. Keep it very, very simple in the beginning. Trust me, business is hard enough. Don't go giving yourself brain damage trying to do 50 things when you really only need to just do one thing right. Okay, sounds good. That's the plan. Um, as, as far as you personally as an entrepreneur, what, what does your day look like? Do you have a routine? Do you have certain things that you have to do or is it just kind of uh, go by feel? Yeah, I mean, I just moved, but so I'm kind of getting into a new routine now that I'm in a new city. You know, I'm fine in the gym and stuff like that. But like my typical routine is, you know, I'm in the office by, you know, I'm up by 630 and then I'll um, get my coffee. I usually do my you know, journal, uh, gratitude, meditation, and then um, usually take a shower to wake up. Then I'm in the office. And then I start uh, going through whatever is the most income producing activity for that day. So I have a Trello board and I always just throw all of my ideas and my to do's into my Trello board. And then every day I'll look at it before I get going and I'll figure out what are the top three things that are going to make the cash register ring the fastest. And then I tackle those three things first before moving on to other tasks. Wow. That's, that's cool. I've never heard of that before, but I mean, it makes sense, man. Get those things done yeah. more often. 
yeah, as an entrepreneur, you're going to realize like there's so much shit you should be doing and that you need to do. And your to-do list just never really ends, you know, personally and professionally, you need to get all of that out of your head into a task management app. Like Trello is the one that I, I like the most. I've used them all Google keep Evernote, all that shit. But Trello is the one that I like the most. So I just throw everything out of my head into Trello. And then either the night before or that morning before I get going, I'm identifying those top three things that I need to do and I'll get those done. And then I can start working on all chipping away at all the other stuff. That makes sense. And and I just, and I just try to time block those things into my calendar because you always have meetings and, you know, appointments and other things that are already blocked in. So you have to, that's the only way you're going to take control and get, uh, you'll be able to get a lot more done that way um, without having to try to, remember everything you know because i run multiple businesses i got a trucking company an e-commerce company um i'm on the board of a software company so in order for me to keep everything straight i have to have it all in a task management app wow dude i I really appreciate you taking an hour out of your day it seems like that's probably so valuable to you know and you're talking to me so that's um that's that's pretty cool um and uh, yeah i don't want to take too much of your time but there's a few questions i always like to ask uh, one of those being, what's a, a book you recommend for someone? Uh, it could be about anything. A book that I recommend? I don't read uh, straight up. So okay. um, I listen to audiobooks more than anything. Um, and like, I haven't read a book since like To Kill a Mockingbird in like seventh grade. But uh, uh, in terms of like audiobook recommendations, you know, um, I'm big into um, like right now I'm listening to uh, – 50 Laws of Power by 50 Cent. Um, I really like all of uh, Trump's books, you know, even before he was president, because the way that that man thinks is just on another level. Like he makes me feel like a peasant. You know what I mean? So I'm constantly listening to um, people that have done great things. Like uh, I'm listening to Henry Ford's book right now. Right. So study the billionaires. Try not to study millionaires. Try to study billionaires. Uh, and it's that whole exposure thing, like tap into billionaires' minds, and then you're pretty much guaranteed to be at least a multimillionaire, right? <laughs> so, yeah. yeah, try not to listen to people that aren't, you know, bona fide 100% billionaires. I think that's going to keep you from getting misinformation. Got it. All right. Sounds good. Yeah, I mean, there's, there's, a, there's a handful of people in the world that have achieved that um that much wealth and so i mean even if you can take bits and pieces from every one of them i mean it's going to put you in the right direction absolutely so that's yeah that's my recommendation and you know always if you don't don't like reading like me you know i'm constantly educating myself though i'm constantly uh, watching youtube videos um educational tiktoks um going uh listening to audible all the time constantly going to masterminds i mean i spent over $500,000 $500,000 on, on my education and I never went to college. So yeah, you have to awesome. constantly be sharpening your skills up at all times. Cool. All right. And then uh, the, the last question I always ask, because this is the, the get wealth podcast. What is your definition of wealth? Um, wealth to me is being able to not only um, obviously you have yourself, right? So there comes a point when you're squared away. You got enough monthly residual income uh, in safe places like, you know, real estate or dividend stocks or triple net leases to where, you know, that money is going to sustain you and your lifestyle pretty much inevitably. You could spend as much as you want anytime you want, but true wealth isn't just about you. It's about impacting uh, others around you. So, you know, I wouldn't consider myself truly wealthy until you know all of those in my immediate circle are also um in a position to where they can you know create the same so i have a long way to go you know i'm in a good financial position but you know i want to create a lot more impact so it goes beyond just money it comes down to impact at the end of the day that's awesome yeah i like that a lot i think there's um a lot that people can take from that and uh, listen, Nick, I really appreciate you coming on the podcast and I know you probably got a lot going on. So being able to share that with anybody that's listening, you gave a lot of really good information that people can apply tomorrow and get going on, um, you know, chasing their dreams and getting their goals done. 
Uh, is, is there anything you want to you want to plug on the podcast? Any like your your mastermind websites? Yeah, I mean, you know, if you if you want to get plugged in, if you're already doing deals, um, you can check out uh, sevenfigurecartel.com. And then above and beyond that, you know, Instagram, I'm pretty good on there. If any of you guys need anything, it's just Nick Perry, REI. Um, you can follow me. And then if you need something, just DM me. I'm pretty good about getting back to my DMs on uh, Instagram. So. All right, everybody. Thanks for watching the Get Wealth Podcast. Nick Perry. Nick Perry. Thanks, guys.